Thank you, Lauren. Well, hello and welcome to the ninth episode of our Heavy Meta podcast. It's your one-way ticket to midnight, cutting through the heavy meta noise. Uh, my name is Dean Schmidt. I'm the founder at Basecamp Meta. We focus on educational content surrounding MetaSearch, as well as MetaSearchMarketing.com, where the focus is on running your MetaSearch programs. So think of it basically if you want to learn about MetaSearch, finding your way, go to BasecampMeta.com. If you need somebody to run MetaSearch for you, you can go to MetaSearchMarketing.com. Now, in our last episode, actually last couple of episodes, we talked about Google, everything from their free booking links and to how they are creating verticalization in hospitality marketing. However, just a couple days ago, Google quietly released some new functionality that significantly changes the game for MetaSearch. Now, I want to put out a, a key component here. Uh, I found this on a Friday as I was going and work, working on an AdWords account. I saw that this was released uh, today as I'm recording. This is a Monday, and as of today, it is not in there anymore. Uh, Google is notorious for the fact that their testing environment is your production environment. They will frequently put things out and then retract them. They may only be there for a couple of days. But the good news is when that starts happening, that's usually a good sign that it's going to be a real thing in this not so distant future. So that said, let me get straight to the point. The new functionality is what I refer to as date-based bidding. So if you've ever run a meta search campaign, there is a number of different bid levers that you can use. Everything such as device, uh, desktop, mobile, and so forth. Uh, you can do it by day of week patterns. You can do it by booking windows, by length of stay, and other elements such as that. Date-based bidding or calendar-based bidding, as it's also called. In fact, actually within Google, they specifically call it check-in date. Uh, not to be confused with check-in day of week. Two different things. Okay, so... What does this mean, first of all? So check-in day of week, by way of comparison, means you're checking in on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and so forth. And so you're looking at that as a day of week pattern. And that's across all of those days of week. So if I put in a multiplier where I say I want to bid more aggressively for Saturday check-ins, that's all of my Saturday check-ins. Not just this Saturday or the following one, but every Saturday for which I have inventory. By way of comparison, also, when we talk about advanced booking, uh, advanced booking or booking window, as I like to call it, is talking about how far out that booking is going to be. So, for example, I run a lot of meta search campaigns where I will bid more aggressively for somebody that's arriving same day or within 24 hours because I know that those are very spontaneous searches. And so I really want to make sure at that point if they're clicking, they're probably more compelled to book at that stage. Uh, so that's a booking window, and that's a rolling booking window. If we say inside 72 hours to arrival, uh, that's 72 hours from tomorrow, the day after, the day after, and so forth. Likewise, if I put out a 14-day window, that's 14 days from today and from then tomorrow and so forth. That continuously updates itself. So a date-based bidding or a calendar-based bidding, if you will, is going to be specific to, let's say, for example, July 23rd. On that specific day, I want to be more or less aggressive. Or I can have a range of dates as well. Like I could have the entire week, uh, an entire month, whatever it may be. All right, so now that we understand what that means, let's talk about how this impacts our bidding decisions. Because now we have the ability to really be more aggressive or less aggressive, as it may be, for specific time frames. Now, within Google, we have... A couple of different types of campaigns that we can run when it comes to meta search. I'm going to just divide them into two, including your promoted properties and then also your, your traditional meta search campaigns where you're at the point of sale already. So when we think about promoted properties, first of all, if you're not familiar with what that is, imagine that you're going to, let's say, New York City. And so you search hotels in New York and you get what we refer to as the Google Local Universal 4-pack that comes up on top of that. At the bottom, it says, view all whatever number of hotels, say 900 hotels. Uh, then you go to the Google Immersive Travel page, which now gives you a further breakdown of properties that are in New York City. All right, at the top of those, you're going to see two selections that have ads listed next to them. These are what's called the promoted properties. So this is kind of like a pay-per-click search engine marketing for a non-branded search term right? Because they've searched for hotels in a city in a specific area, not your specific property by name, but I want it to come up on top of those ranking orders. 
And so there are two ads that are on top of that. Now, when you run these campaigns, uh, traditionally, it was all about the campaign. You could be more or less aggressive for the campaign. Uh, so maybe I really wanted to dominate that space, I could bid very aggressively. Uh, or if I wanted to be a little more conservative, I could reel that in. But it was for all time. It didn't matter if somebody was searching for this week, next week, or nine months down the road, that campaign setting applied to that entire duration, unless you used things like a booking window, advanced booking day, and then you had to keep on updating it and do different things like that. So you could apply those metrics, but what I couldn't do is I couldn't go in there and specifically say, you know, I've got a need period coming up in September. So September 15th, that whole week is a real need period for me. And so I want to be more aggressive to drive new business during that time frame. So the only way you could do that before was to calculate, okay, how many days in advance is that? And then every day go in there and manually update that to minus one and minus one. So that you constantly had a rolling window to account for that time frame. Now with the date-based bidding, you have the ability to specify that you want that exact time frame. Likewise, if somebody was actually looking for your property, so now they've searched for your property by name. Let's say you're the uh, Hyatt Regency Wichita, right? And so they've searched for your property by name. You've pulled up the Google My Business page you've got on the right-hand side of the screen, and you see the meta search points of sale. So now within those as well, I can also be more or less aggressive based upon my occupancy. Now, not to misunderstand, Google Meta Search, any Meta Search for that matter, is always sensitive to whether or not you have inventory. If you are sold out and your inventory is closed out, your campaign by default for that date that was selected is done, right? You've shut it off. There's no inventory. Hopefully the OTAs are also closed out. That's another issue. Uh, but once there's no inventory, it doesn't matter what the campaign is doing. Uh, inventory is closed. Nothing happens. It's dead in the water at that stage, okay? But what that doesn't do is it doesn't look at are you at high or low occupancy? And it doesn't consider how should I change my bid and my strategy based on that. Now, here's where it gets into a real philosophical conversation, actually, because you could make arguments going both ways. Let's say now, for example, that I'm at a high occupancy. Maybe I'm at 85, 90% occupancy. So what is my strategy at that point when I think about MetaSearch? I could, on one hand, say I want to bid more aggressively so that I can really own the direct booking channel with that because I'm at high occupancy. I really don't want at this stage to pay any OTA to make that booking for me. I want whatever's left to come in directly to me. So I need to be more aggressive. Well, but of course that requires a marketing budget, right? And so you could make the counter argument that, well, if I'm at high occupancy, I don't want to spend my marketing budget on those dates. Maybe I will let the OTAs book it instead. Keeping in mind, I'm probably going to have a larger, a higher cost of sale for that OTA booking and not guess, get the guest information. So there's pros and cons to that and two ways to look at that. But now with date-based bidding, I have the ability to go in there and, and manipulate that. Uh, conversely, if I'm at really low occupancy, one could say, well, okay, I'm at low occupancy. I really want to be uh, more aggressive. Now, what I would recommend doing at that point is look more at the destination marketing. That's where I want to plug that in because I've got to find new business, not just the people that are looking for me already. Uh, but there's the opportunity to do that. But likewise, too, that you can look at that and say, okay, I'm at low occupancy. Uh, you know, I just want to make sure that I've got the strong presence with my brand because it does convert better than an OTA does. So it's important for me to make sure that we're in there, right? All in all, there's a lot of strategies that can be applied and there's a lot of different philosophies that go with that. But we have a huge blind spot in our meta search campaigns and that is the occupancy of the hotel. Uh, yes, you at the hotel probably know your occupancy. I, as a consultant, can work with you and talk with you and know your occupancy, and we can make adjustments based on that. But here's the real holy grail, and that is when we start seeing these technology providers, these vendors, whether it be a Derbysoft, a Cody, a Whip, a Mirai, or anybody else that I haven't mentioned out there, integrate with some of the revenue management systems, the RMSs out there, such as Ideas, uh, Rainmaker, Duetto, and a long list of other ones on down the line. So once they've integrated that so that your meta search campaign is now aware of what your occupancy is and you've established guidelines that if I'm at high occupancy, then you've created an if then scenario. Uh, now that can all communicate with each other, right? That's why this is such a game changer, right? Two key things there. Revenue management now really becoming a key factor in how I manage my meta search campaign and the ability to be more or less aggressive based on need dates and or occupancy. 
those are real game changers for meta search marketing campaigns. Okay, so that's what we have for today. Hey, in our next podcast, we're going to move on to TripAdvisor. That's been a really contentious topic here the past year, especially with TripAdvisor Plus rolling out. Um, I do have a video on YouTube you can look at called TripAdvisor Pros and or TripAdvisor Plus Pros and Cons. And what we're going to do is actually update that. That was done back in March. So we want to say TripAdvisor Plus three months later and look at some of the pros and cons that we talked about and see how have they evolved. That'll be our next episode. With that, though, we would love to hear from you and learn more about what questions you have. Uh, you can reach out to us at info at basecampmeta.com or info at metasearchmarketing.com, and we will be sure to add your questions to our next show. We'd love to have your input. In the meantime, though, be sure to subscribe to our podcast and become an upfront fanatic, tearing down the barricades to reach the stage. And, Lauren, back to you.